you want me to tell you a secret? The thing that separates a decent investor from an incredible investor? Well, it's research. Among newer investors, research is seen as a mythical thing that is left to people smarter than themselves. Because they can then take that research that's been done, not knowing how or when it was done, and then use it to secure themselves in an investment they don't actually know the first thing about. Investors are becoming increasingly focused on positive price estimates and not the ideal of learning how to research and get those figures themselves. Think about it. Starbucks was a small cap. Amazon was a small cap. Dunkin Donuts was a small cap. You think the most established investors waited for price targets or estimates on these companies? Well, no. This is what I'll be running over today to let you become an independent investor that can sit back knowing why you're invested in a company and that it could well be the next 100 bagger with a Tesla bull run in its pipeline. When you're talking about a company's strategy, it's easy to get confused over what to look for. Company strategy could mean a lot of things. But when it comes to importance, we're looking for the advantages that a company has and how they've placed themselves within the market to make their service widespread. Take a look at the company's website, take a look at their investor relations page and ask yourself a few things. Does the company have any lucrative deals in the pipeline? Is the investor relations page filled with talking points and positive information? Is the company in a better place than its competition to suit customer demand, if it has any competition? And most important, how does the company actually make money? What exactly is the service that the company supplies? It's scary to think that when you ask a Tesla investor what Tesla makes as a product and how they earn money, they will adamantly fight that every part of a Tesla is made by Tesla, which is simply untrue. Find what the company actually makes and familiarize yourself with the product, and you'll have a better understanding of how the company will make money in the future and how they can market them. A common matter of fact that is often totally disregarded within a company is its culture. And it's something that simply isn't spoken about enough. A company's culture is the ecosystem that makes the company work. If you don't like your job, you aren't going to put your best effort in. You're not going to try and make that company the best it can be. Simply, this is company culture. What matters most to a company exactly? Making a name for itself worldwide, establishing itself as a pioneer, treating its employees well, giving back to the investor through incredible profits, or are they just out to make a quick buck? Take a look at the board of directors, take a look at the CEO, see the experience they have in guiding the company. Too many times has a company surged in the stock market and then far down the line it's come out that one of the directors, or the CEO themselves, has had negative intentions in the company. And in hindsight, all it takes is one look at the directors and some background checks to have sound mind they want what's best for the company. An incredible example of this is the way that you could see the shambles that Nikola was as a company, especially when taking a look at their former CEO. He was notorious for selling snake oil, and the company collapsed massively due to that awful trait further down the line. History tends to repeat itself, so you don't want to be caught out for not doing enough research on a certain topic that could hurt you further down the line. No matter how you look at financials, they can be a hard thing to wrap your head around, but they are the absolute be all and end all of a company. Sure, looking at a company earnings report isn't as entertaining as watching a YouTube video that has the title Ergo, this stock will 100 times in literally 12 minutes because Warren Buffett's dog's daycare owner walked outside the company's headquarters last year. But I'll break it down for you. What does the company's balance sheet look like? Does it have any excessive debt? Does it have any free flowing cash to experiment with? Does it have a significant market cap? These are some basics to think about because they are great for the layman. They're easy to take a look at and be confident in. Of course, there are more in-depth financials to look at like EPS, percentage of shares owned by insiders and institutions, and dividend percentages. But these I'll be saving for a more in-depth video down the line. Financials should be seen as the relative strength of a company and how it stands on its own two legs. If the company is turning a profit, has no debt, and lots of free-flowing cash, day has been of some value to you. Often overlooked but constantly regretted is the idea that investing has severe risks, and with these risks come a loss of capital. If an investor doesn't exercise what is known as risk-reward, then things could turn bad really quick. 
I wouldn't personally invest in my grandma's winter coat for 20p, hoping that there's a pound in one of the pockets, but other people would, and this is all down to personal opinion and what you're willing to exercise in your buy thesis. In layman's terms, how safe is the business? The business may be progressing incredibly well, but what happens if it hits a hurdle? Maybe earnings aren't met, maybe there's a better, more established company trying to put you out of business. Hey, there's a reason why there's no companies that go into competition against Costco, because the risk reward is so skewed in favour of Costco. Try to analyse all of the potential problems the company could have in the future, and examine the ones it's already faced. Remember. In 100 bag of stocks, we're in them for at least one to three years of progress. So you want a company that if it's a hurdle, it won't affect in the long term. Just for an example, because risk reward can be quite confusing, Orbital Energy that I've covered in one of my other videos had incredible setbacks and problems in its way as it progressed from a Fortune 500 stock in the 90s to a new green energy stock it is now. The risk reward, however, was for me perfect as it had shown how reliable the stock was and the strides it was taking to change the company. That company has gone through a CEO change, multiple setbacks in stock price, liquidation, everything. And it's still standing today and now is actively progressing to be a different company with incredible potential. There are many other reasons as to why you would invest in a company, but at the bare minimum, those four tips should give you some good understanding of the company as a whole that you are investing in. And the final one to top up the list is valuation, and no, not other people's valuations, yours. What is the market price today, and how does the market price factor in its growth prospects? Although I look at market valuation quite deeply, it means a lot more than you'd expect. You don't want to buy great companies at decent prices, you want to buy great companies at greater prices. If a company has had a great run, or has released some groundbreaking news, the stock is trying to find its actual price and place in the market the valuation will be off and trying to compensate for this. Do not see this as an investment case. Be the person to say, okay, right now it's overvalued and overcompensated by a result of something out of the market's control. So your job is just to sit back and wait for it to retract and reach its genuine price. Or if not, dip below because that's the reaction it would have and then invest when it's found that point. This can work in the opposite way as well which can be an incredible time to buy into a great company. Alibaba is a recent indicator of this because the price of Alibaba dropped immensely off of some bad news about Chinese regulations, but nothing in the business changed at all. As Jeff Bezos once said, the stock isn't the company and the company isn't the stock. We're just a kind of good representation of what the company's worth. And that means it's up to catalysts to drive that price up or down. So it's up to us evaluate the company and find its reasonable price. The market swings based on momentum and catalysts. It's for you to learn when a catalyst is making a stock underpriced, overpriced or it's fair value, which can be hard, but with some work on the previous tips and any news, it simply gets easier and easier to spot as your time in the market gives you the experience needed. I hope what we've spoken about today has been of some value to you. As always, I make these videos to try and help educate newer investors. But these tips are usually forgotten by great investors also, so they're great to get out in the open. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and liking the video, and leave me a comment on how I can improve in the future. Apologies if I've uh, sounded a bit stuffy today, I am battling a cold, but I hope it wasn't too annoying to listen to and was like a nice, calm way to learn. So thanks again, it's been DD Bay signing off.